Hello, my name is Jordanis Figuereo. In this tutorial, we are going to create a curly hair style and learn the basic of the operators used to accomplish these results, especially the curl operator, but also guide cluster operator, freeze operator, and surface comb. I have my scene ready with some guides. This tutorial assumes that you know the basics of Ornatrix. If not, please go to our Ornatrix 101 playlist to learn the basics. Let's start by adding the core operator. This operator will allow us to add two types of waviness to the hair guides. Those types are the sinusoid mode that causes the hair to wave in one axis and helix mode to wave the hair in a spiral pattern. For this tutorial, we need the helix mode. I will set all the parameters to zero so we have a better understanding of what they do. First, we need to control the structure of the cores using the face parameter to set the total number of core or rotation per strand. Decrease or increase this parameter until you get a good amount of core length. Then use magnitude to control the size of the core and magnitude ramp to determine how magnitude affect the guides from root to tip. Use it to reduce the core effect in the roots and tips to get a more natural effect. Noise scale and noise amount use a purling noise function to add randomness to the cores. Use low values just to break the uniformity. Add the hair from guides operator to generate and interpolate the hair and render settings to adjust the thickness of the hair. In this example, I'm using mesh from strands to have a better display of the hair in the viewport, but you don't have to do this in the new version of Ornatrix for Maya. Now we need the guide cluster operator. This operator will clone the hair using the previously created and call it guides creating the curling effect that we are looking for. Use the cluster ramp to adjust the clump from root to tip. Here, try to bring together most of the hair to create a cleaner look. Now add a freeze operator. This operator will add a freeze effect to the hair strands along his length without actually changing the length of the hair. Easy to add this natural freeze effect that real hair has. Outlier amount determines the amount of freeze to be added to the outliers. Outlier fraction determines the percentage of outliers hair. Use these two values to break the uniformity of the hair clumps and mess up the hair strands a little bit. You can use the amount ramp to control the freeze effect from root to tips. Use the scale parameter to increase the granularity of the freeze effect. This will give us the noise effect at a strand level characteristic of this type of hair. While setting up your freeze operator, make sure to increase the viewport count fraction. Freeze is dependent on the total amount of hairs, and increasing the hair preview count helps you to get a better idea of how the render will look. Now readjust the freeze setting and done. Now that we know how the cord and guide cluster works, we can apply these principles to a more complex example. Alright? I started by selecting a distribution mesh and adding my guide preset. It's just a guide from mesh operator with default settings except for guide length and randomness set to 0.5 and 0 respectively. Then I will use a length operator to determine the overall length and length randomness of the guides instead of using the length parameter in guides from mesh. I want to keep it procedural. Now I will add the surface comb operator. This operator allows us to procedurally comb the hair guides along the surface by using directional vectors that we call sinks. Inside surface comb, use the sinks editing tool to define the shape and direction of the hair using sinks. With the Sinks Editing tool active, you can create sinks along the surface by clicking and dragging on the distribution mesh. This will affect the guides around the sinks using the indicated settings in the surface comp. By just clicking and not dragging, you will create a point which will repel the hair around the sink. 
This is very useful to create her parting. Add some points to create the division needed for the parting and add some more things to give the hair some gravity and some flow. I will use the edit guides operator to tweak some of the guides using the move brush. Now my favorite part, the curls. Here is where we can apply what we've learned in the introduction. At this point it's good to have some reference images. Tweak the parameters until you have something closer to your references. But first, we'll need to add more resolution to the guides to be able to add more details. With the detail operator, we can increase the point count of the guides and the smoothness, having individual parameters for viewport and render. Increase the point count until the curls are better defined. Maybe add some smoothness too. Going back to the curling operator, keep playing with the settings to match your reference. Remember, you can still go back to the length operator and adjust the guide length and even add some randomness to the hair stance. Finally, add hair from guides to generate the hair and render settings to set the thickness of the hair. Add the guide cluster operator and create some tight clumps as before. Going back to hair from guides, I'm increasing the hair count percentage and changing to legacy viewports to see something closer to the final rendered result. This is not needed in Ornatrix 1.3.2. We have implemented a better visualization technique in viewport 2.0. I end up setting the guide interpolation to affine and guide count to two guides. We need a regular and even hair distribution and those settings works better on this example. Now it's time to create the parting. We have to tell hair from guides where the parting is, so Ornatrix can avoid hair interpolation in the parting line. For this, use the partings editing tool in hair from guides. Set the editing mode to add to create parting planes and edit to modify the parting planes. Click and drag on the distribution surface to create a new parting plane. And again, I'm using mesh from strands to preview the hair, but this is not needed anymore and the hair physical shader will be added automatically to your hair in Ornatrix 1.3.2. At this point, we should go back and tweak some of the settings to improve the details and add a freeze operator to add this natural freeze effect that we did before. Finally, we are ready for some test renders. I will tweak the hair thickness and increase the hair render count. I use Renderman for rendering and I have a hair shader ready for this test. I have made some more adjustment until I got some decent result and this is the final render. I hope you liked this tutorial. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comment section or even better, join our user groups on Facebook. Thanks for watching.